Well, what we want to examine is that the word Masorite comes from the word Masura. The word Masura means traditionalist when it is involved with the Babylonian Talmud. So, the Masorites, even though they were faithful copyists in most areas, they had a obligation to the Talmud to disguise the name, to cover the name, because again, according to the Talmud, anyone who pronounces it with its proper letters has no place in the world to come. It is not to be used, it is to be disguised. So, can we trust that name? To examine this, what I want to look at is a standard Strong's Concordance. This is no particular, particularly wonderful translation, this is just a standard Strong's Concordance. And I want to look at Hebrew number 3068. Hebrew number 3068, you will see Yod, He, Wa, He. However, you will see the dots around the letter. And you get the pronunciation of Yehovah, as it appears here. Now, within what is written under Yehovah, we are told that previous to the Renaissance time, there were no vowel punctuation marks around these letters, and that these punctuation marks were added around the Yod, the He, and the Wa, He, so that we would say Adonai and not say the Father's name. So when we got to the Father's name, instead of being able to read the scripture straight, we'd have to twist our tongues to say something that did not appear. You follow me? This is very important. If you look at 3069, you will see the same four Hebrew letters, Yod, He, Wa, He, except this time it says Yehovi. This came, as it explains in the Strong's Concordance, these vowel points were put there so that when people came to this word, they would say Elohim. Again, it's the Father's name. So they got the word Elohim. So uh, they got Yehovi from Elohim. They got Adonai from Yehovah. So we can say with very strong conviction that neither one of those names can possibly be the name because they were just formed by adding the vowel punctuations of other words. And we know he only has one name. When he spoke to his prophet, his servant Moses, he spoke one name. He said, Haya, Asher Haya, I am that I am. Moreover, he spoke to him his name, Yod Hey Wah Hey. He said, This name I was not known to by my by your fathers, but I give it to you. And he revealed it to his people, and the prophets later used this name. We know in Zechariah chapter 14, it says, In that day he shall have one name. Why is that? That is because we see so many variations of his name appearing today. We see Yehovah, Yehovi, and if you look also in the Strong's Concordance, sometimes you'll see Jehovah. We know there was no J in the Hebrew language, so Jehovah in Jesus, there's no way those words could be Hebrew. We also know that it is not Yahweh. We see the, 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 the words Yahweh in here. We're going to explain that later on. But this is also presented within the Strong's Concordance. So we have about four or five different names that are found just in the Strong's Concordance. But we're going to work off of the letters. But before we begin to work off of the letters, I want to address two books that, that are by rabbis that state that the name was previously used. The Old Rabbinic Doctrine of God by Rabbi A. Mammerstein says this, there was a time when this prohibition of not using the divine name was entirely unknown among the Jews. Neither in Egypt nor in Babylonia did Israel know or keep a law uh, prohibiting the use of God's name, the Tetragrammaton, in order in ordinary conversation or greetings. Yet from the third century of the Common Era unto uh, the third century of the before the common era to the third century of the common era, era, such a prohibition existed and was partly observed. Now, in Dr. Cohen's book of Every Man's Talmud, we see that there was a time when the free and open use of the name was used even by laymen and was advocated. However, this does not mean that the people of Israel did not hold the name in reverence. We know that we can reverence the name, but we are told to use the name, to call upon the name, to preach the name but we have to use it in all of reverence. So, 
What is this name? What is the name that has been taken from the people? What is the name that has been said no man can speak it even though all of our salvation in the latter days depend on it? Well, we want to examine a few scrolls first to give us a better understanding of the vowelization markers and how they are very new to the language. What you will see behind me is the Shema scroll. It is from the second century and it is pre-Masoretic. And you will notice there are no vowel markers. Also, now you will notice behind me what is called the Ezekiel stone. It dates to the 550th year BC. There are no vowelization markers whatsoever. None of the Dead Sea Scrolls have vowelization markers. The Dead Sea Scrolls happen to be our oldest versions of the Hebrew Old Testament, the Tanakh, and there are no uh, vowelization markers used. You can see on the Hosea Scroll behind me, and now you can also see on the Tehillim, the Psalms Scroll that is also behind me, there are no vowelization markers. Now, the picture that you see behind me is a modern-day miracle. This particular stone that you see behind me was found in New Mexico, in Los New Lunas, New Mexico, and it is the Ten Commandments, found in Paleo-Hebrew. Now, these Ten Commandments are written in the Paleo-Hebrew, and we see the Father's name. There are no vowelization markers. This also tells us that before the Europeans came over to America, the Father's name had made the trip beforehand. So the Father's name has been to this country and has been inscribed in stone. And I'm going to show you, right in front of you, you will see that the transcription of this done by a, a modern writer as they, they've taken it off the stone and just put it on a regular piece of paper so you can make out the Hebrew. And I'm going to show you the different places that the name appears. Okay, so moving on, now that we see that the vowelization markers are very new to the language, we're going to try to attempt to say the name. We've got to proclaim it, we've got to preach. We've got to preach it, we've got to speak it, and I'm convinced without a shadow of a doubt this is the name that I'm going to be revealing to you. We've got to try to say it without vowelization markers because they are hindering us and distracting us from saying the name. Again, they were put there so that when an individual got to the name, they couldn't read the scriptures as they appeared. They had to read something that did not appear, as, as, that was added as for Adonai and Elohim. So we're going to look at these letters.